Hello, my name is Susan Catherine Medcalf and this is the story of how I became an author. As you can tell from the title, it was accidental. A lot of people sit down and think they have a plot and they're going to write a story. And so this is how their writing career begins. But mine was a little different. I'm basically quite shy. So I wouldn't really have put myself out here if it hadn't been for this accidental thing happening to me. Because my name is Catherine, growing up, my parents called me Susie. So that's why now I have Susie Medcalf as my writing name. For hundreds of years, we've actually got together to tell stories, whether or not we'd all meet in one another's homes couple of hundred years ago say to tell a story or later on somebody would maybe recite poetry or make up a story for entertainment so I'm pleased to become part of this tradition nowadays we meet in a pub or still in each other's home and we call the stories that we tell each other gossip sometimes they're true sometimes they're not but it's irrelevant it's how we entertain one another so this is my story and I do hope that you enjoy it. My story starts underneath my sister's shed. It was a really miserable November day and it was pouring with rain. And I was feeling a little sorry for myself, I have to admit. I was caring for my mother-in-law who wasn't well. And also I was in the process of selling my mother's bungalow the money was required to pay for her nursing home care. So as you can gather, I had quite a lot on my plate at this time. So when the phone rang, I thought maybe my mother had taken a turn for the worse or it was my mother-in-law. And then it discovered it was my sister. Now my younger sister lives in Devon and she said she got a badger living underneath her shed and it was digging the garden up. So because she was in the middle of reservations, her house was upside down anyway, so I think this was the final straw. So tearfully, it's please Sue, can you ask him to leave? So knowing nothing about wildlife, but wanting to help my sister, I said, yes, of course I can. So I decided to do some research for her. So my research found that badgers can swim. Did you know badgers can swim? And they're confined mainly to the Northern Hemisphere. So they're North America, Canada, right across Northern Europe. So the furthest south they go is actually the honey badger and he's quite a ferocious beast, but also very intelligent. So I quite enjoyed hearing about these badger facts. The more I read, the more interested I became. Then I found that badgers can climb. They can actually climb quite a height, so they don't just dig, they climb as well. But they're fascinating creatures, in so much as they live in family groups. They're called a clan. Now, badgers have their cubs around April, May time, and usually two or three to a family. They love bird seed, as you can see from this picture, and peanuts, anything like that they'll go for. If you have a new build home, the chances are you've got them walking across your garden and that's because their grandparents did that as well and they pass this information down the generations. They particularly love flower bulbs so if you've got tulips or anything like that in your garden you can guarantee that that's what they're after. They have a particular fondness for tulips. But they do eat tons and tons of worms a night. They clean their set out every single day and they tuck the debris underneath their chin and drag it out and replace it with new. So each room smells fresh and is all really nice every day. Their latrine or toilet area is quite a way away. It's a few yards or so away from where they live. And again, I thought this was really nice because it shows how clean they are really. They groom each other and dig and clean their set all out together and they play. A clan usually has six or so badgers in it. 
I had one child when I said, because we go to schools now, I had one child who mentioned when I said that generations can live in a set for 100 years. He said him and his family had lived in his house for 100 years. I think he said his grandma was about 100. Whether or not she was, I don't know. It's amusing to have the questions that children come out with. My research also found that badgers love peanut butter sandwiches, bananas, all sorts of things they love. They have a particular fondness for custard cream biscuits. Who doesn't? <laughs> I also found that badgers are in some areas, in, particularly in Europe and Russia, have been used to, to eat. So badger meat was considered quite acceptable. And in some religions, they used to eat badgers on a Friday because they used to swim, they swim, they thought they were akin to fish, so it was acceptable to eat badger meat on a Friday. I also found that the shaving brushes that we used to use, that men used to use, are actually badger fur. And badger fur is also used for sporans in Scotland, and it's been used for decorating for things like doing a marble effect on pillars and things. So now I've got seven little books out. Um, each book is what we call a chapter book. So each book is a story unto itself, but it leads on to the next one to encourage reading and caring about wildlife. Now this is something I have become very passionate about. And I really think if we can encourage reading and caring about wildlife and kindness for friends, it will be a better world. As you can see from the covers, my character travels. So he isn't just confined to the um, United Kingdom. He actually travels to uh, Australia. The reason being for that is that both my brother-in-laws live in Australia and now so does our eldest son. But how does he get there? So it's all interesting things I found through research. I've done an awful lot of research for some of these little books to get the facts right. So it features Australian animals, both unusual and the usual ones. But I haven't featured things like a kangaroo or a koala because I wanted different, different animals. It also features about um, an opal mine and also how camels got to Australia. Book five is called Stropple to the Rescue. And Stropple is a camel. So again, you can tell that it's a little bit more informative. So you can pick up and learn things. And to my joy, I've had adults that didn't know that how camels got to Australia. So I was able to pass this information on. The latest book sees Itchy in America. So America has a mountain lion so it features the mountain lion and also a little bit about groundhogs. So I hope they are informative and educational, as well as teaching, you know, through an amusing way. I have an illustrator for what I call the itchy books, and her name is Nicole, Nicole Paulson. She was born in South Africa, and she always had a lot to do with animals. She even helped her brother with his snake collection. I'm not quite sure that a snake collection would do me, but there we are. <laughs> She even had a pet rat, and I'm not sure about that either. But Nicole's very talented, as I'm sure you'll agree as you see some of the sketches. So I thought I'd read you a little bit of the story, and it's all about how Itchy's adventures begin. So it's Itchy Board Scratch it, Itchy to his friends, who's the main character. So this is just what happens at the beginning and how he meets his best friend, Enor Mouse. He's just being rescued from a well. So try as he might, each time his wet fur dragged heavily and he slid downwards again. His tail was very slippery and it wasn't helping. Itchy wasn't the lightest of badgers. Put my tail around your waist, called out the voice. We can't leave you down there. So Itchy wound the tail tightly around him and hung on as the creature slowly crept from the edge. One small step at a time, he dragged Itchy free of the icy cold muddy water, puffing and panting as he did so, and with a large tug, Itchy was free. 
Exhausted, they both lay on the ground, equally filthy, heaving and panting, trying to catch their breath. The creature moved his massive bulk to stand up, slipping and sliding in the mud, trying to regain his balance. He took out a large ragged handkerchief, almost the size of himself, and began to wipe the remains of the pizza away, also mopping his brow and nose, which was shining from exertion and the colour of his handkerchief. How do you do, said the creature, introducing himself. My name is Enor, Enor Mouse, and I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance. My friends call me Norm for short. I can't thank you enough, said Itchy, still shaken from his fall. My name is Itchy Bald Scratchit, Itchy to his friends. And the oversized mouse finished wiping his paws and offered the badgers his handshake. Would you like to accompany me for some tea? asked Itchy. It seemed the least he could do, and besides, his stomach was now rumbling, his foot was sore, and he was very, very cold. My wife, Matty, cooks a fine worm stew if you're interested. Oh, I'd love to, said Norm, wishing to himself it was pizza and not worm stew. The two friends, their heads bent down into the howling sleet, made their weary way towards Itchy's home with Itchy leaning on his friend's arm, limping because of his twisted paw. Matty was waiting for him. Matty is Itchy's wife. Beautiful black eyes she had, like gleaming jewels. She had a smaller than average badger face, but she groomed herself proudly daily. But Itchy had to sometimes help her because she was still matted in places. Her daily task cleaning her home took up most of her time. It was very important to Matty her home was clean and tidy. They had lovely views of the forest and they lived underneath the shed. They spent most of their time warm and welcoming, cosy in the one room. A fire was lit in the hearth, giving off a soft glow with a pot of hot worm stew bubbling nicely on the top, its aroma wafting around the set. Itchy's favourite armchair and stool were waiting for him. Itchy'd been gone a long time, thought Matty. I hope he brings something nice home with him. Plumping up the cushions, Matty suddenly heard voices on the wind. A kind of dragging sound. Whatever's that, she thought. Then she said, oh, Itchy, what on earth have you been doing? I fell down an old well, he gasped. Fortunately, this kind mouse, Norm, came along and rescued me. If it hadn't been for his strength, I don't think I would have got out. I've brought him home for your lovely worm stew as a reward. Never mind, explained Matty as she rushed out to help bring Itchy into the room. The smell of warm worm stew welcomed them and they lowered Itchy gently into the armchair. Later, Itchy told them all about his conversation with Peter and how their home was under threat. If the apples built homes on the beautiful field near their set, they would destroy the wood and all the countryside they loved, not to mention the other animals who were their friends. The woodland was abuzz with the news and the trio sat up late in the night discussing what to do. The next day, Matty had an idea. If there was nothing in the field at the moment to prevent the houses from being built, then maybe they could find some th something and put it there. It didn't matter where it came from. After all, they weren't to know the apples, how it got there. And at least the field would be declared, declared historic and it could never be built on. The only problem was where to find such things. It also meant they would need to leave their set and journey beyond the field, beyond the wood, and beyond the raging river. Now books four to six are based with Itchy in Australia. And the reason for that is because they don't have badgers in Australia. So because my brother-in-laws and my eldest son live there, we thought it would be quite nice for Itchy to visit and meet other wildlife. Because if Australian children don't know what a badger is, then English children might not know what a wombat is or some of the other animals. So this part of the book introduces Etheraw, who's a frilled lizard. Itchy looked towards the entrance and could see a scaly creature that was almost the same colour as the tunnels, waving his skinny arms wildly above his head in the air. The creature was frowning, hissing and stamping a clawed foot in annoyance. 
He was almost as tall as Itchy and appeared to be wearing a frilly piece of dried scaly skin around his neck. To Itchy's surprise, the skin suddenly rose up like a collar, making him appear twice as wide. He was very cross indeed. Obviously, he was very important. A startled creature, Itchy replied, Sorry we didn't see you there. He'd never seen a creature covered from head to foot in scaly skin like this. No one ever does, said the creature, getting more and more cross. He obviously felt he was being ignored. <clears throat> Itchy could see his yellow tongue as he was shouting at them. What an unusual creature, he thought, and he's so angry with us. You're on my territory. Where do you think you're going? The creature continued, frowning hard, his face becoming more irritated by the minute, his tongue flicking about and his eyes full of rage. Well, replied Itchy, blushing, taking aback at the response, up until now, most of the animals have been quite friendly. My friend Norm, Itchy smiled and waved nervously. We need to return home to Badger Wood. We shouldn't be here, really. Well, why didn't you say so? replied the creature crossly. He didn't like unexpected visitors. He stood on his hind legs and put his hands on his hips, trying to look even taller. There's certainly strange creatures about. What were they doing here anyway? So keeping a safe distance, he shouted out to Itchy and his friends, My name is Etheror and I'm a frilled lizard, the keeper of these tunnels. No one goes in or out without me seeing them. I have to keep an eye on the entrance. You never know when an apple will come along. Itchy approached the lizard cautiously and sat down beside him to explain how they simply must try and look in these opal tunnels for a way home. So my series continues with book seven now in stock and I've already started on book eight so do keep an eye on the website. I have actually got another project that I've been doing and an author in Brittany asked me if I would write a story to do with an area in France for holiday makers and expats. So the other story is slightly for slightly older children or for adults as well and that one's called Madame Moussel Again, a play on words because I love playing with words. And it's about a mouse and her family and the adventures that they get up to. Again, it's educational because education and encouraging reading and learning is one of the things I love. And I think you're never too old to learn or to, to read or write your own book. So by all means, do have a go, especially at this time when we're all indoors. Maybe keep a journal, something of your childhood, maybe memories that you'd like to write down to pass on. Or maybe just a happy book. You could have, a, you know, put your name on it and it's my happy book. So you put happy memories in there. So if you get a day when you're a bit quiet, then you can look back and look at your happy memories. But please do try writing. As I said at the beginning, if I can write a book, then anybody can. Last year I did a presentation in the porthole room at Clevedon Pier and it was really lovely and such a beautiful venue as I'm sure you'll agree. And I would love to have been there again in purpose this year but with this virus it was not meant to be. So I'm hoping that next year I meet some of you who have seen my video at Clevedon's More Than Words Festival, so for 2021. So I look forward to catching up with you all then. Maybe if you have any questions or you'd like me to sign a book for you, then I'm more than happy to do so. But in the meantime, they say there's a book in everyone, so keep writing. Thank you.